Welcome to Zoom O'Clock with your host, Tessie Anthony de Nassau. This podcast brings you enlightening discussions with leading experts and public figures directly to your ears. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Zoom O'Clock with your host, Tessie Anthony de Nassau. Today, I have a really wonderful guest for you all who is working in a very, very, very interesting and timely domain, uh, which we will get in a minute, with my darling friend, Sarah Moulindua. Welcome, Hi, Ceci. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure to have you, and thank you for your time in your very busy schedule um, to, to speak to us and tell us a little bit about your work. You have worked in fashion. You have worked in so many different domains. You were one, uh, you were an editor as well of a fashion um, magazine, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Yeah, Uh, that's right. And now you're doing something really, really wonderful, which I think as a mother of two teenagers, I'm so grateful that you're doing that. Um, (laughs) You are one of the founders, well, one of the hosts of the Sex Clinic, which comes out, uh, which is aired on Channel 4. So tell me, dear Sarah, Mm -hmm. what is the sex clinic? How did it come to being and how did you get involved with it? So the sex clinic is a show, as you said, for Channel 4, and it's about sex relationship and and encouraging people, particularly young people, to go for sexual health screens. What we know in the UK is that sexual health is becoming more and more of a, of a topic point because we're seeing more infection rates over the past, say, five to ten years. We've seen infections going up and up and up. And the, the reasons for that are varying, and we can go into them later. But um, we're seeing an increase in the amount of infections that we're diagnosing in young people. And so as part of a... Um, uh, of a what's the word I'm looking for sort of like a national obligation a national obligation to young people Channel 4 came up with this concept of a show called the sex clinic um, which basically debunks sexual health myths it, it encourages young people to talk about sex relationships their bodies anything to do with the issue of sex and anything that will fall under that umbrella which is so many different t- uh, topics with sexual health being sort of the main reason that brings people to the clinic um, and so the show is all about encouraging young people to, to talk about um, you know issues that body issues that they have any infections that they may have and just talk about their sexual health in general but the thing about the show is that it's also educational so there's a lot of things that we talk about and discuss and explain to to the viewers in great detail that they may not have gotten um in in school from sex education and that they probably wouldn't get as much of in you know in a, in a healthcare setting as well and so we sort of bring all these things together as a one-stop shop for everybody to sort of learn collectively on the show wow that is so interesting. So some questions probably our listeners are already thinking, you know, um, how does someone like you with your background get yeah. into, uh, into accepting to being a host? And how was that for you? What was the feedback from your environment um, once you have launched the show? Yeah, it was, it's a very interesting one because I think... Uh, my working background is very varied. So I'll give you a little bit of a history of my working background. So I went to university at 17. So I'm in my 30s now to put it into context. And so I started university quite quite early, uh, early on. And I worked in a hospital for about five years sort of doing general medicine. And so after I did that in the hospitals, I decided I wanted to specialize. And I always wanted to, to learn more about HIV. My initial goal was to go to Africa and work with with HIV and AIDS charities and do that kind of work. And so in order to do that, I had to get experience within sexual health and HIV. And so I applied for a job um, at one of the, actually the biggest clinic and the the busiest clinic in Europe, which is based out in in central London. And I applied for a job there and I specialized in HIV and sexual health for about eight years. But in the meantime, alongside my nursing career, I had also started a career in fashion. And so I worked part-time as a nurse and the rest of the time I was working sort of freelance in the fashion industry. And I always sort of did the two alongside each other. And as the fashion career started to grow, I started to do less of the nursing. And so I was given this opportunity by complete coincidence um, by a friend of mine who happened to work in TV and she knew about this show that was going on. And then she put me in touch with somebody who put me in touch with somebody. And then I, they invited me down to do an audition and it was very interesting because obviously I'm a qualified nurse and I specialize in sexual health but then I 
I had the, the fashion background, but then I did radio. I was a radio presenter for four years. And I did a show which was all about um, fashion and anything that was trendy going on in the capital and in the world and everything. And so I had this background as a radio presenter for four years. And so when they, when they sort of found me for the sex clinic, it, they were quite intrigued because I was a qualified nurse, but then I also happened to be a presenter as well. And so in a weird kind of way, a lot of people, when they ask me, would you do for work? It's very difficult to ask that question. <laughs> and so I, yeah, it takes a while to explain it, but then people are always like, oh, that's a little bit weird because I, I appreciate that, you know, all my careers are not related in any way, but with the sex clinic, I've kind of managed to bring everything sort of together in terms of presenting and being a nurse and doing all that kind of stuff. So a lot of people find it very interesting um, that, you know, I've managed to kind of do it in that way. But for me, I think it's, it's a perfect balance because I get to do everything that I love in, you know, in sort of a, in one place. So, and also doing something that's got social value as well. And that gives back to other people and benefits others in a way. Um, Cause I'm all about doing stuff that, you know, that not just I, not just for myself, but that other people can sort of grow and learn from as well. And so, yeah, the, the feedback is very, it's very positive. People love the show. I mean, when we launched, we're in our third year now. And when we launched, it went viral, like, everywhere like all the stories that were in you know in all the all the press and stuff and it's just interesting because sex is said like like we said just before uh we were talking earlier you know sex is something that everybody does it's something it's how we all got here it's as normal as breathing yet we don't really speak to, about it in, a lot and especially in the way that we do on the sex clinic where we actually show people you know, you know, with with consent from the from the contributors, but we show you know people's genital areas. We show what what a genital wart might look like. We show how an examination is carried out. You know, we really show everything, and people have never seen something like that before. And the feedback, yeah, the feedback was really really good, and um, and I think it's something that was needed, especially for this generation. Wow, that's really interesting. Um, I did not know that you were also showing actually the genitals, uh, which yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, you're watching it at the beginning, and then, and then before you know it, you see it doesn't warn you. And so a lot of people, I think, when they watched it for the first time, they were like, "Wow, like this, I've never seen," because it's such a private thing that you do. It's probably you know the most private doctor appointment that you could, that you could have. Um, so to see that on TV, I think a lot of people were shocked for different reasons but also were quite happy that we that there was something that was educational and it was target it's targeted to sort of young people as an educational thing but people of all ages have really appreciated um, what they've learned from this first grade so talking about the audience then um what would you say is your more is your main viewership is it more young people is it more people of all ages as you said Who, who watches you the most and um, who needs you the most? Who is more present in the mm -hmm. show as well? Younger people or people of all ages? What have you seen? So the, our, our audience would, would be the younger audience. So we're definitely targeting more of the sort of millennial um, sort of Gen Z generation who are more used to interacting maybe on social media, who have sort of grown up in a much um, faster paced Uh, society I'd say because of things like social media things like dating apps we find that people having sex a lot more sex is a lot more in your face than it used to be because of the internet movies music lyrics all these kind of things and so the target audience is younger people because they you know they they are you know that they're, they're sort of flooded with sexual content all the time and we're, we're seeing the numbers there so we're seeing the statistics of STIs so sexually transmitted infections we're seeing this the, the numbers going up not so much with Corona and everybody's, you know, <laughs> on lockdown at home, but it is a trend that we've been seeing for some time. And so the target audience was very much young people and the way in which the show is all laid out, it's very vibrant. Um, the, the contributors to the patients, they're all, I think under 30, 30 and under is the, um, is the age range. So that's very much the, the audience. I'd say 18 to 28, 27 is probably the highest, um, the, the average age range for our audience. So for people who haven't seen the show yet, uh, in your view, obviously all of the shows are important and, and I'm sure insightful, but in your own opinion, which show was the most insightful for you where you were like, whoa, I really learned a lot today? Oh, wow. Gosh. We've had so many, we've probably had like almost 30 episodes now, so to think of them is crazy. Um, let me think... There was one patient that came in actually, and 
it was interesting. So he was a young guy and he came in, he had been on a summer holiday and he'd gone somewhere, I think it was in Spain or somewhere, you know, these boy lad holidays that they go on in the summer. So he'd been on one of those and he had sex with a lot of girls, hadn't used a lot of protection. Then he came into the clinic, he was worried about an STI. And initially when he came in, he was very much very sort of um, alpha male, very sort of, you know, yeah, I don't really care about women. I'm not looking for a girlfriend. I just want to sleep with women, whatever. And very sort of negative in that way. And so he started off in that way, So, which I'm used to sometimes. And so, you know, get him in, get all his details. And then I start asking him questions about, um, you know, he, why, he, he, um, why he feels the, uh, animosity towards women and why he's very reluctant to move further with women outside of just sex. And so he started talking about an experience that he had when he was younger, when he was about 18, and how he had his heart broken and how he's you know, struggling to, to move forward and to, um, to build a connection with somebody. And I thought that was really interesting because I think oftentimes we know, we know, you know with, with, with genders, the sort of the differences when it comes to our ability to talk about our emotions and to feel that we can you know, speak to you know, friends, family about issues that we, might be, that we might be going through. But we know that with men, that still isn't as um as commonplace for men to open up as much as women and so his interest his story was interesting because that one experience has affected him moving forward for years going forward and then he ended up just sleeping with all these girls so from the outside looking in you think oh he's just you know he's just a dog or he's just you know this is terrible man but when you really speak when, when i spoke to him and we got the background story he was very emotional and just speaking about it alone off you know off camera after we spoke about it he felt a lot better about the situation after you know i gave him some advice that we, we, we spoke about it in context and he said I've, I've never spoken to anybody about it i just sort of held on to that situation and it it negatively impacted me for years and all I had to do was speak to somebody about it and then by doing that it kind of made him feel a lot better and he felt like a massive relief lifted off of his shoulders and I, for me that was one of my favorite episodes because it just goes to show how a negative experience can affect somebody and how somebody's people behave in certain ways because of cer certain reasons it's not necessarily because of because of who they are as a person it might just be somebody's inability to um you know, to compartmentalize their emotions in that way. So I thought that was a really good learning curve for, for the audience, especially for young people and especially for young men, because I think oftentimes we neglect the emotional aspects for men. And I think a show like that where, yeah, and we have both men, women, trans, um, non-binary, everybody, you know, all young people are welcome. And we have a lot of young men that come in and they're very, and you know, we're really, really lucky with our contributors because they really do make the show in that they come in, we don't force them to say anything that they don't want to say. They really just we ask questions and they're free to, you know, retract answers or to give answers. And they've just been really open and honest. And so for me, that's my favorite episode because it just, I think nowadays, because of men's mental health and suicide rates and things, I think having a show like that where men can hear other men's uh, experiences and sort of rationalise their experiences. I, for me, that was one of my favourite episodes. And I've got a lot of feedback from other guys from that. So that's good. Wow, that is really good. I, I totally can understand how that can be helpful because it's just nice to see that, oh, okay, it's okay to have emotions and it's okay to... Yeah, talk. yeah, um, right. Yeah, no, that is that is really, really interesting, specifically for the generation now where you kind of create these avatars on Instagram and you became that you become that fake person just yeah. to fit in with your tribe, right? And right. Uh, and and emotions and just mm. being also human being for young men specifically, it's sometimes very difficult, right? Mm. So uh, so I like the psychological part as well that you also yeah. human being in itself and not just in you know in in the physical manifestation or uh, mm. behavior um but also in kind of like uh, their mental health i think that's so important and really fantastic actually i didn't Absolutely. thank you yeah. no problem so, um so moving on then now during times of corona how how has that then been the feedback wise for you and also for the show right um what is there some things you have implemented more, some different topics? Has there been a demand for a specific topic more than for others? Or maybe just a question even, what is your most prominent topic at the moment? So with coronavirus, um, we would have been filming our follow our third series um, in the summer, but we were on lockdown, so everything was completely. So like everything else, you know, in the world, it's been put. The series has been pushed back until hopefully, you know, next year when we're out of 
um, you know, everything's back to normal, hopefully. And so, yeah, and so we didn't film the series coming up. And so moving forward, I guess we won't know until, until the, you know, with the, with the virus, because um, the thing with the show, it's all about sex relationship. Because of the virus and people are not going out, people are not meeting, people are having less sex, or if they are, they're less likely to admit to it because they would be sort of breaking the um, the restrictions and stuff like that. So now I've noticed that the questions have changed. It's more about self pleasure. It's more about how to date, how to date online. It's more about making connections in other ways. And so this, these, these are now the topics that we're finding a lot more. And um, people talk, people are asking more questions about loneliness and how to, you know, make connections. So we're finding, we, we're seeing uh, changes in how the virus has affected the type of issues that now we talk about to, to, to young people. Um, so now it's kind of an issue more about, I think it's interesting because now I feel like, and, and this is just from people that I've spoken to and the kind of questions that I'm receiving, but it does feel like people are now see the value more of human connection as opposed to just fleeting, you know, um, uh, short term relationships. And so what I found out is people actually want to date now. I think now with the virus, what, what we're seeing is that we don't know how long this is going to go on for or if, if it may come back or not. So I think people are more moving towards the idea of maybe settling down, not, not necessarily setting down, but looking for more long term uh, relationships and connections with people. So I find the questions have changed a little bit. Wow, yeah, that's that's absolutely, yeah, it makes sense as well, because you realize, yeah. actually, you know, when you cannot be out all the time and meeting new people, mm. really, it can get very lonely. Also, can, the topic yeah. of self-pleasure, I think it's so important. Mm. And I myself, you know, I, I had uh, some similar discussions with my oldest son, because just mm. because they were talking about it in school, and, you know, and so he asked me questions. And it's really, you know, and I said to him as well, I said to him, there's, there's nothing wrong with talking about that or, mm. or thinking about doing that. I said, you know, everyone is a human being and, and it's just, you know, it's normal to, for a young person then to start mm. discovering yourself uh, and uh, what you like and what you don't like. And at the same time, you know, and I can, I, I can definitely understand that people who are not in a relationship and who are alone at home, that these topics come up a bit more. So um, very, very right. interesting um, finding that people actually express that as well towards you. Do you have any, so where can people submit questions or get in touch with you? Because we're running out of time already. I, I have oh. so many questions, but how, how can people oh. get in touch with you um, for questions such as the ones questions yeah so um the best place to get in touch with me will probably be my instagram i am quite good um at responding to people especially when it, when it comes to questions um especially about health and stuff i always either direct people or give people advice um so i'm more than happy to do that uh, and that's uh, at sarah.malindwa that's on instagram and i'll also be i haven't started yet but we, we're literally just towards the end of the the planning uh, part of it but i'm going to plan doing sort of like a q and a weekly q and a on instagram so where people can submit questions we're going to have topical discussions and talk about all these subjects and stuff so um so my instagram is the best place because that's where i'm more interactive with followers that's really really good i make sure as well i put um your details below the video here on youtube and soon we will have it as well on spotify and apple podcasts and everything and i will make sure um everyone reaches this video and your information as well so, last question to you, um, in times of Corona then, because we are in the second lockdown, you know, and, and even I myself find myself sometimes getting caught up in my brain, kind of like a spider's web of feeling lonely, disconnected, um, unmotivated, you know, where there's always work, but it's when you're at home, you know, it's just difficult to always be on the desk and not get yeah. distracted and all of these things. So what keeps you going? Is there a specific, like someone you follow that inspires you, uh, a book you have read, a quote, a song? What, what keeps you sane in types of music? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Do you know what's been keeping me sane? I've been focusing a lot more on my diet and on uh, and, and trying to exercise more as well. And also sleeping as, you know, getting my eight hours in. I think before my life, before Corona, my life now, completely different. Before I was always at work events. I was up in the morning, out all day, you know, evenings I have events and I was constantly on the go. And, you know, you pick up food here and there, but I never, you know, my diet, I, I noticed that my skin started to break out and I was like, right, I'm going to really focus on my diet. So I cut out a lot of sugar. Um, I'm trying to cut back on coffee now. I've added loads of great stuff to my diet now. So I'm, I'm, I'm using this time to really almost start new habits now because this is the time we, you know we may we look at this time now and we think oh you know it's a terrible time but actually this is a time that we'll never get back again you know once everything goes back we'll just go back into normal won't have this time at home and so what i what's been keeping me going is learning more about nutrition uh doing more exercise reading there's a book called the power of now which is fantastic i actually read it before about five years ago and i remember it gave me a sort of kick to do something and then i remember i can't remember what i did but i ended up doing it because of reading this book and so i thought well now is a good time to to read it up again because i couldn't remember everything so the power of now is a great book and i just spend a lot of time meditating praying um it's funny because the, the social media accounts that i used to follow all the time were more like not follow no uh, not the only ones I used to follow, but the ones that would give me the inspiration would be like your fashion ones. So when I go to, you know, when I'm going out, you know, get some inspiration for dressing up and stuff. Whereas I don't really, you know, don't really um, pay much attention to them as much now. And so it's more sort of the health, wellness, um, Instagram feeds that I'm paying more attention to. Glamour magazine are really good um, because they always have they have a thing called Wellness Wednesdays, and and they they use different. Um, different content creators every week and it's a new person and that person will talk about anything from nutrition to sex to uh, relationships to a anything to do with health and wellness so that's a really good one if you're looking for things to keep you going and positive and healthy okay well i will definitely check it out as well it's always nice to hear how my friends keep going in terms of yeah well, right. i will definitely check it out and i do agree with you you know our lives were crazy before and now it's really, and I did the same as you, you know, I, I tried to get my eight hours of sleep, better food, um, really also focus on what work matters most, right? Because yes. before you get distracted and yes, as you, every night, different events and here and there and then it was all amazing and I really loved it. But just now mm. it's kind of like, as you say, it's a limited time we have where we can mm. actually look inwards and mm. just check in with ourselves. I think um, that is definitely one of the blessings in disguise. Yes, now, yes. Uh, in this terrible pandemic. So uh, for sure, thank you for sharing all of that. No problem. So my dear Sarah, um, this is it. We ran out of time. Thank you so much. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Tessie. It was great. Anytime and we can talk online a bit more and I make sure that if people have more questions for you that they will be directed towards you because I think uh, again I think the sex clinic specifically as well in a country like the UK mm. is yeah. very conservative and very traditional mm. and do not talk about emotions or anything else in that no. <laughs> it's really brave and um and I think it's just fantastic. So congratulations to you and to Channel 4 for raising awareness of topics which are, as you said before, as natural as taking a breath. Yes. <laughs> so thank you so, so much. And uh, stay healthy and we talk soon. Thank you, Tessie. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this Sumo Club. We hope this discussion was insightful and has provoked some new ideas for you. Please share and subscribe. If you like to keep in touch with your host, you can find her on Instagram under Tessie underscore from underscore Luxembourg and on Twitter under Tessie underscore DE. <laughs>